Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Rhino 7 sub -E tool is not just for the organic form. You can actually create a lot of very geometric shape. Today I'm going to talk about how to use the sub -E tool to create this cross pendant in very simple step. Are you ready? Let's get started. To create this pendant, we can dissect them into several parts. First, to this is the thickness that I created at the end. Without the thickness, this look like this. This full part in the middle, those could be something really easy. But what we need to do is actually only create this section right here. And then we can polarize it into four in order to get the shape. So that's starting from the scratch. I'm going to starting from the top view and kind of draw a boundary here. We are going to start with the rectangle from the center. And I wanted to have it about 30 millimeter by 30 millimeter. So this is just a guideline for us to design this piece for size wise. And in the middle, I want them to look something look like this. Okay, and I'm going to start drawing my design. The first one will starting from here to the bottom, that's for sure. And then I do want it to have something look like this coming out something. And that will be my first line. And then my second line is going to be something like this. And it's going to curve up a little bit, something like that. I also want to starting a line right in the middle. And then going into diagonal to snapping into this point. So that will be another element there. I mean, you can continue to edit up, but I want to simplify a little bit. First of all, I wanted to have a line from intersection and coming out about that long. And then the other line going to come in back here. And with the curve that we have, I'm going to draw something look like this. Maybe this is a little bit too long. So let me move it back. So once we have those lines, I'm going to mark them into the red color. Those are the lines that we are going to pipe. Now you can pipe it with the regular nerve surface, but it has a lot more uh, way to edit with the sub D surface. So that's coming into the sub D tool. If you are not familiar, you can find a sub D tool under this tab right here, or you can go into the top menu and then you can have a sub D menu right here. We are going to simply just using the pipe tool, for example, on this one, let me lock it. And so for this middle one here, we can simply just using a sub D multi pipe. Uh, one single pipe will be fine. I would like to set it up the radius for 0.7 millimeter and to set the zero for a smoother surface. If you set one, it will be a little bit rougher. I would like to stay with the zero and then we'll get something like this. Apparently this is a little bit too short, right? If you toggle into the box mode, you're gonna see it's going from this point to this point. But if you toggle back and then you're going to see it's about this. I'd like them to have a reaching to two points. So I, in fact, I would like to creating another line right in the middle. So I'm gonna pick up the subdate loop there and just add one roughly somewhere right in the middle. I'm going to pick up these faces as it reached there. And I want to pick up these faces and just want the scale so it will be nice and pointed. All right, so that will be my first one. Now, if you take a look on the perspective view, you're going to see something like this. I do like the tip right here as kind of pointed. It will look much nicer. So I'm going to pick up this edge and this edge. Right at the sub D tool, we have this one. It's called add crease. And we want to add crease there. And I'm going to make it lower. So if you take a look on the render view, now you can see this a little bit sharp. Uh, point on the top. I think this will look nicer. All right, that's the first one. The second one we are going to do multi pipe again and with the same radius and I'm going to get something look like this. Apparently this is kind of a little bit too fat, right? So what I wanted to do, first of all, I'm going to make the top the same like sharp instead of a round. So I'm going to use a quiz right there 
after we add the crease, I'm going to, uh, while this is still selected, I'm going to use insert sub D loop. And I want to insert the one on this side. So you can see this is the new loop that I insert, right? Let me turn this into the ghost view. So you can see that I have that there. And I wanted to do is I want to lower it down. So like on this side, it's puffier. And this side is kind of caving. I'm going to move it in as well. All right, and then I wanted the end to be pointed, so I'm gonna pick up these faces and kind of round it and make them smaller by 3D scale. All right, if you want to curve, you will need to add in one more section there. So I'm going to pick up this loop there, adding a loop somewhere there, and then I can kind of uh, rotate it move around and then you can start tweaking the shape maybe you want to go in you want them to come in a little bit more so things like that you can continue to tweak it right and apparently this is a way too tall so i'm going to pick up the point and have them coming down so give them something like this like this is way too pointed so we want it to have it come this down uh, you can continue to edit whether with the vertex or you wanted to do with the age or you want to do with the faces, you can do that as well. All right, so let's take a look on the render view and see if we like it, something like that. And apparently this is like tweak it way too much. So I'm going to bring out a little bit or we can bring this line in so where the intersection will look a little bit nicer. All right, so the next one we wanted to do is the one in the middle. So again, we were going to do is the sub D pipe, and then we're gonna pick up this curve, radius for 0.7 and everything else the same. And I'm gonna come back with the ghost view. I need to add a few more sections there. So I'm gonna pick up this sub D edge, and I wanna add a loop right in the middle and maybe a few more. So I'm going to add a loop again. This time both sides equal yes. So then I will have something like that. I want this to be thinner. This actually on the bottom, I want it to be thicker. So you can continue to add it into the shape that you like. And we're gonna bring this down as well. And then not only on the top view, on the side view, I want a button not as rounded. I mean, we are going to create a flat button. It's actually not bothering me, but I do want it to having those coming down. This one coming down like that. It's a kind of gradually taper to the center. So this point, I want to move it down. And this faces, I want to move it up something like this because this is going to cutting inside of that uh, circle design right there all right so now we have this i want to adding one more curve i want the middle part to be more like a mountain peak right so what we wanted to do i'm repeating the same technique just wanted to show you uh, what you can do and uh, we want to insert another loop right about here right with this loop we got this point, I want this going down, something like this to be a little bit more graceful. Like this gonna go in, something like that. And always checking on your render view and see if that is the shape that you like. Sometimes I'll make it too pointed. It's hard to see without in the render view. And maybe this one, we wanna move in a little bit like this. And maybe with this face right here, this is like super rounded and I can actually make them into more faces by using this command is subdivided subd or all of a sudden you will have all those faces there, right? And then you can continue to edit whether you want it to like moving up so you will be more flat on the bottom coming in down or you want to have a certain point going inside and outside. It's up to you how you like to tweak it. All right, so I'm going to stop it right there. Now, you'll say PJ on the right side and the left side is not the same. And double check if this is the shape that you want on the right side. Apparently, this is a little bit too pointed there. So what I like to do, if it is getting way too pointed, what I like to do is I will pick up this H all the way. So I will insert another one on the side and that will look like this. I can have this one now 
uh, flatten it out a little bit by just move it down so it doesn't get in like too crazy there now you can see that I have this block in there we just need to tweak it at the same time let's take a look on the render view and see if it is better all right and it's kind of giving a little bit folding there so we're gonna come back with the ghost view and sometimes you don't see much when you are in a smooth mode for that folding but if you turn on the box mode you're going to see where the kink is right so you can kind of moving out you can see like this one is already getting inside right there so we just need to pick up the vertex on this one and then we just wanted to move it out a little bit or move it down a little bit right so that can avoid certain of the folding in there sometimes in the box view is easier to see so now you see there's no folding in there all right so you can continue to edit the way that you want now once you finish on the right side let's say this is already what you like not exactly what i like but i'm going to stop it tweaking here and then what i wanted to do is make the right side and the left side the same so i'm going to pick up this object right here and we are going to use the reflect and we're gonna reflect with the y-axis and when you click enter and it will get something like this right so this is going to copy the one on the right to the left right so whatever you do now on the right side it will copy to the left side so that's a basic idea uh, we want them to getting a little bit thinner all right so that is that and I also feel like down the bottom this is way too fat but that's okay we're going to fix it later by giving an overall thickness so what I wanted to do is I'm going to fast forward the same thing that I'm doing here we are going to pipe it first once we are piping we're going to kind of tweak it by click up this edges here and the following two we're gonna do in the same thing we want it to be crease and with this crease i'm going to insert one sub d here on the right side all right double make sure by checking on the render view and see if this is what you're looking for and if it's not you can keep tweaking i'm going to kind of a stop here otherwise going to take really long for the tutorial but you get what i mean to get this type of the shape here all right so once you get it uh, we just need to do a bunch of the polar array before we do it we wanted to double make sure if it is looking good so let me go ahead to select this one so i'm going to mirror to the other side by snapping this point to this point and if it doesn't look good you can continue to tweak it all right so i'm going to show you the rest of it we are going to pick up this one and this one and mirror to the other side as well and once you like the design what you wanted to do is pick up those and we wanted to do the polar array and we want to snapping into the zero and type it four. i always want suggest you to record a history so you will get something look like this right and then if it doesn't look right and then since you record a history so we can kind of a moving around to get you know the correct shape or correct location or you can tilt it or things like that and once you like it we will need to turn this into the poly surface so what we wanted to do is we want to pick up all the sub d tool and we want to convert it to the nerve surface and you will say it will break the history or something that we don't have to worry about it all right since we already wanted to keep this now once we have this if you click on the object you're going to notice that it is a closed solid poly surface then we can make the piece right in the middle but over here i'm just simply just going to use a sphere to represent that middle piece just wanted to take a look on this one something like this okay and then the way to make overall because the one on the bottom now is an even thickness right some is higher some is lower i want them to coming into the same high as the bottom of this ball here so let me go ahead to delete this one first and the next step i wanted to do is pick up all this poly surface and let me go ahead to boolean union them the next thing i need to have a boulder so let's go ahead to use a mesh outline 
and it will create this outline right there. Let's double make sure you click on this curve. It should show it's a closed curve and we want to come into the solid and then we want to extrude it straight so we can have it overall the same thickness all the way, something like that. How do you like this approach of using the sub D for more of a geometric shape? Leave the comment under the video. Let me know what you think. If you'd like to know more about the sub D, I have an online course dedicated for Rhino 7 sub D course that has a lot of the tutorial for organic jewelry shape. Check out the course and the link is in the description below. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.